Welcome back, it's Dr. Clark here uh, doing the lab chart uh, tutorials. This is uh, the next little step in using lab chart, which is using your comments and markers and navigating through your file. So let's just have a little look at this data set. This is a real student practical uh, carried out by third year BSc students looking at uh, grip strength. So this is uh, grip strength and we've got a load of data from the start here which uh, they seem to be looking at maximal grip here. It looks like they've done three. And then you move through and they seem to have done something. If you look down the bottom it says comments 60%. So they've obviously done a 60% maximal contraction. They've then done a second contraction where they've done a 50% maximal contraction. Uh, they've written an end marker here, which is nice of them. And at the end, you've got a 20. And um, one thing you'll notice from this data file, just by looking at it at the screen, is these comments don't appear when things happen. They've appeared while things are happening. Uh, this is a very common mistake to do in this program. And for those of you who have already uh, acquired data using um, this software in a practical, you might have already done this by mistake. Click the button too late. All is not lost if you click the button too late, as these people clearly have. Uh, I'm just going to focus on this area here, which is the area I want to do some analysis on. If I have a look very closely at this area down the bottom by just zooming in, you'll see that they clicked slightly late and they missed this section. It's quite clear that at this point here, there was a false start by the look of things, but at this point here, the actual grip started. So all is not lost, as I said. You can actually drag and move your markers after the event. So this is my marker. I go down with my cursor until I see this little double edge line. And I hold it over the uh, little black blob just above the marker number three, and I can move that and drop it where the experiment actually started. Let's just check the end and make sure that's right. Yep, the end looks about right. That's about when the, uh, the grip came off, and you can see there's a slight decay after the grips come off, which is good. So the end is in the right place, and um, now the beginning is in the right place as well. So we can, we can use this little data set here to do some some simple analyses. But let's first use these, uh, these new uh, comments just to navigate around the file a bit. So if you've been fairly good with your comments, and you can see here they've labelled MVC, which is obviously maximal contraction. So I'm going to move that over to where the first maximal contraction took place. They've got 60%. So I'm going to move that to where it looks like, ooh, difficult to tell, you see. They look like they've done a couple of false starts and then a real one here. So I'm going to move that to this point here where they look like they've started their actual contraction. Although I'm not going to be analysing these data because it does look a little bit, uh, a little bit difficult to analyse. But then we've got the 50% contraction here. At the end we've got 20%. So I'm going to just move that little chap so he's at the beginning of that contraction there. And at the end we've got the post experiment to see if there's any fatigue with maximal contraction. So I've got a quite a long file. I'm zoomed in to a level where I'm happy to see the data, but I can't see everything at once. So you can use the comments drop-down box here on the top of the screen. If you can't see that, you can right-click on this top menu and make sure you can see the little tick next to the comments box. So you can click on this, and you've seen all your comments here. MVC, 60, 50, end, and then the 20, and then the post exp. So if we want to go straight to the 50, which is where we are on the screen, we can click here. And there it is, straight in the middle, 50%. Let's go to 20, and there we are, 20. So to navigate around your file, it's very simple. If you've got the job of analysing heart rate at one of the conditions, for instance, it's very easy to go to that condition and just analyse that set of data, which is very nice. But we're going to concentrate on the, on the 50. Incidentally, there's also a comments window, which is available on the Windows menu, which gives you a complete list of comments, the time they took place, and their number order. You'll see there the number order isn't the same order in which the uh, comments were added in the experiment. It's the same order they were added overall. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6 has been added after the event. Somebody's put an end marker in, obviously at the end of the experiment, uh, but that's put in there as number 6. Um, you can filter them. So if you've got hundreds of comments, you may want to look just for comments with the word end in. And there we are. There's just the end comments. You may want to look at comments with MVC, and of course it got, it's got rid of the end comment that was in there and just shows the MVC. So this is a very powerful way of navigating through what can be quite complicated files. Uh, and you can choose which channels to display. So in this, in this context we want to look at all the channels, but you may have made comments on individual channels. So it's a very useful, uh, useful little tool, the comments window. But we're going to go back to our main window. Uh, so we've now got our markers in the correct place. 
we're happy that everything's in the right place and we're happy now we can move on and do some analysis with this file. So uh, we'll stop this tutorial here and move on to the next one.